Hello everybody. Today we are going to work on a new transformation, but first we are going to review simplifying of like terms. So um, if you would practice the first and the last one of these, you're more than welcome to practice the other two, but um, for today to keep it shorter, let's do the first and the last one. Find your answer. So like I said, we're going to work on a new transformation. Today's is called dilations, which means we're enlarging something or reducing something depending on a scale factor. Okay, so we are going to determine them. We're going to use them. We're going to find images based on a scale factor as well. I've embedded a video into the slideshow. If you are a super visual person, um, go to the slideshow and you can watch this video. But if not, um, it's not required, just extra for you if you need the extra practice. Okay, so this is the important part of dilations. This is probably what I would put into your notes. You're gonna start seeing a K and K is scale factor. Okay, it tells us how we are changing our figure, how we're dilating. And it tells you here that if K is larger than one, that the dilation is going to be a larger image than the pre-image. If it's between zero and one, it's gonna be smaller. And then obviously if it's one, it would be the same. So we call K greater than one an enlargement we call K between zero and one, which is usually a fraction, a reduction. Okay, so those are the things that you're gonna start hearing, an enlargement, a reduction, and then the K being the scale factor. So here's an example of a K greater than one. We start with this red triangle. We use a scale factor of two, and now our new triangle, this blue one, is two times bigger than the one we started at. That's what scale factor means. It means you are making it an enlargement or a reduction. In this case, K is larger than one. It is an enlargement. We are taking and doubling our triangle. Here's an example of a K that's between zero and one or fraction. This is a half. Notice the red triangle is still our pre-image and our reduce triangle because it's smaller between zero and one, our reduced triangle is now in blue and it is smaller. So an enlargement gets bigger based on K being greater than one. A reduction gets smaller based on K being a fraction or between zero and one. So when you're trying to find a scale factor when you're given an image and a pre-image, the easiest thing to do is to find a point that they both have and then figure out how they got from one point to the next, okay? So in this case, if we were to look at our figure, you'll see that they both have this point right here. Okay, they're both there, okay? And again, notice that it says we're going from A to B, okay? So A is the bigger figure, B is the smaller figure, so we are going down, we're going from bigger to smaller, so we are doing a reduction, okay? You already know that, so that means that we automatically know that our answer should be between zero and one. So if I look at my points, this point is one, two, three, four, five, six. So zero negative six is the A point. The B point is zero negative two. And to get from the A to the B, we know that there had to have been some sort of a reduction, some sort of a division is another word, okay? When we're reducing, we're dividing. So how would we get from a six to a two? Hopefully you would say that we would divide by three. 
So dividing by three is the same as one third. So that tells us that this scale factor is one third. The scale factor for this problem to go from the A figure to the B figure is K is equal to one third. Okay. So now we're going to look at another one. Okay, notice it says this time we're going from A to B. So that means we are going from a smaller figure to a larger figure. So in this case, that means that it is going to be an enlargement, right? Enlargement. Which means that K has got to be bigger than 1. So we know we're looking for some sort of a value that is bigger than 1. So again, we're going to pick points that you have in common. I would pick like these corner points are nice and easy. Okay, so if we are going to look at those, it tells us that our points are negative 3, negative 6, and negative 6, negative 12. Okay, so negative 3, negative 6, negative 6, negative 12. And remember, we're going larger. So we're saying, how did we get from 3 to 6 or 6 to 12? And remember, it has to be the same factor that's making it bigger. It can't be different for the x and the y. So to get from 3 to 6, you would times by 2. To get from 6 to 12, you would times by 2. So that tells us that our scale factor is k is equal to 2. Okay? So we've looked now at this one, which was a dilation. We went from a, fi a bigger figure to a smaller, or a bigger pre-image to a smaller image. Now we've looked at one that's gone the opposite. It has a smaller pre-image and a bigger image. So that's a or an enlargement, reduction, enlargement. So now we're going to just play around with it a little bit, okay? We're just going to say what happens when we multiply by certain scale factors that are given to us, okay? So in this case... I'm just going to pull it up over here so I can write. Okay, so we are changing every single one of these by a factor of 2. Okay, this is our k equals 2. And you have to change your x and your y value. So because it's greater than, we're going to be multiplying. Okay, we're multiplying to get our answer. So we're going to take negative 5 and negative 6 and times them both by 2 and get negative 10 and negative 12. We're going to take negative 1 and 2 and times them by 2 and get negative 2 and 4. We are going to get 4 and 4 and times them by 2 and get 8 and 8. And you guys figure out what S would be. We're going to take 1 and negative 3 and times them by 2, and what do you end up getting? So now we're going to try this for a K is less than 1 or between 0 and 1. Okay, and again, remember when we go through this that this value right here is K, and because it is between 0 and 1, it is going to be division that we're doing here, okay? Multiplication when we go for an enlargement, division when we go for a reduction. So you're obviously going to have some fractional answers when you divide. They're not always going to come in perfectly equal. So if I'm going to multiply everything by 1 fifth, this is going to get me negative 7 fifths and 0. Negative 7 right? We're going to divide by 5, basically, is what we're doing. So if you change this to multiplication, you would be taking negative 7 times 1 fifth or negative 7 divided by 5, okay? So that's how you should be doing this one. So the same thing for E. This is going to be a negative 7 fifths, 
And negative 5 divided by 5 is a negative 1. So that one actually comes out in a nice, even manner. Okay? And I want you guys to try this last one. Okay? What do you get when you times this F point by the 1 fifth? So the last one we're going to practice with is a fraction, but it is a number that is greater than 1. So it is going to present an enlargement, but I just kind of want to go over with you how to multiply when you're dealing with a fraction, okay? So I'm going to pull it up on this other screen again, okay? Again, remember this is our k value, and we have to multiply everything by it. So if I take this first point of 2, 6, and I times 2 by 3 over 2, and I times 6 by 3 over 2, okay? You would say 2 goes into 2 one time, 1 times 3 is 3. 2 goes into 6 3 times, 3 times 3 is 9, which tells us that our new point is 3, 9. Okay, another way you could recognize that is if you were to put a 1 under here and make them both into fractions. So you would have 2 times 3, which is 6, 1 times 2, which is 2, which then reduces to 3. Okay, I think I'm frozen. Give me just a second. Okay, so we're back. Okay, so it reduces to three. Same thing would happen here. Six times three is 18. One times two is two. 18 divided by two is nine. So you'll notice that you're gonna get the same answers no matter what. Okay, so I'd like you guys to try to find B and C for this scale factor of three halves. Okay, so hopefully you're feeling uh, really confident about dilations. I feel like it's kind of the easiest once you get your, hand, your head around it, okay? So we do have a dilations worksheet today and a Google form that you're going to enter your answers into. In order for you to get credit for this assignment, you need to get 12 out of 16 correct, okay? Hopefully you're going to get more than that, but at least 12 to be able to get credit. You will be able to go back and make edits and resubmit um, to get to your 16 points. Again, if you are struggling with anything that we are covering, please come to office hours. Please reach out to me, text, email, call, so that I'm able to help you. Hope you guys are doing well. Bye.